The exhibition is about the relation between Florence and Islam. Uh, people think that Islam is a new acquisition to the world, which is not, of course, historically. It's, it's a very old ancient civilization. And we wanted with this exhibition to focus on two main points. One point is Florence, a very rich, nice, important, artistic town. And the second was the relation Florence had with Islam, especially uh, two uh, reigns of Islam. One is the Mamluk reign and the other one was the Ottoman reign because uh, the Medici, for instance, had a very, very good relation with both of these empires and they had a very important trade with them. Trading uh, textiles, getting carpets and having this kind of uh, attitude to the, to the East world. So it's not an exhibition on Islamic art, even if we have masterpieces of Islamic art, and it's not an exhibition on Florence, it's an exhibition of both. So we can say that mainly Florence, Florence was a place where they were trading and producing the best textiles in the world. And at the time of the Medici, main important Medici in the, in the 15th century for instance, it, it was, they had a change of, 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 of trade. Because if, if in the 13th century you had silks and textiles coming from the east and being treasures in, in the cathedrals and other places of uh, Europe. In the 15th century, the way was the reverse one. We had Florentine, Genoa and uh, Venice, of course, Venice very important, uh, trading with the east. And uh, in the court of the Mamluks, in the court of the Ottomans, for instance, in the Topkapı Palace, you have uh, textiles, dresses made with Florentine textiles. So the textile was something which was coming from the west to the east. On the reverse, from east to the west was coming one good which we never have produced, which were carpets. Uh, carpets became a, a status symbol, you know, it was something very, very important, the design, the, the, the beauty of the abstract design of uh, flowers, colors and so on. So it, it was very, very early, it became a, a, an object which was traded and also entered in the collections of the, of the most important families. And the most important family in Florence was the Medici. And the Medici were trading with the East, they were bankers, were uh, very important, and they had, a, 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 especially Lorenzo, had a very good eye, and he was impressed by, for instance, the metalwork which was produced in the East. No other collectors has this bright eye, and from documents we know that they, his collection was really amazing. So we collected objects which could have been, and God knows if they had been once in the Lorenzo de' Medici collection of Islamic metalwork. The story is that in uh, 18th of November of 1487, the Sultan of Egypt, Kait Bey, who was a very powerful man and had a policy of diplomacy and gifts, send an animal to Lorenzo il Magnifico. Uh, this animal was a giraffe. No one has seen a giraffe before, even maybe, uh, even Kait Bey knew that uh, in the triumph of Caesar, of Cesare, uh, there was a giraffe. So that could be something that in a way he quoted, and he sent this giraffe to Florence. It arrived in Piazza della Signoria, not very far from here, and you can imagine the impression. It's like now in Torino when Cristiano Ronaldo arrived, everybody wants to see him. And, but the point is that the clausury nuns, you know, suore di clausura, the monastery nuns, we could not go out from the monastery, they also asked to see uh, the giraffe. I don't know if the nuns are asking to see Cristiano Ronaldo. It's possible, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure they will show him. Anyway, it was an impressive object 
and it doesn't survive very long, uh, only a few days, but in 1865 another man, again from Egypt, another king, sent to Leopoldo II, uh, Granduca di Toscana, another giraffe, which is this one, uh, which arrived, uh, stayed very happily, I suppose, uh, one year and a half in Boboli, and then she passed away. And this is the original skin of that, uh, the, that beast. So the, the connection is what, what happened in, 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 uh, in 1487 and in 1865 with this, this nice giraffe. Here we are in front of uh, a very important painting, which is uh, the Adoration of the Magi by Gentile da Fabriano. And the choice of this object is not to, uh, to show, uh, of course, it's to show a great painting, which is, has plenty of details and a very important thing, but is, is, is in a section at the beginning of the exhibition talking about exotic, what it was thought to be exotic. And uh, what is the idea of, of Gentile, which has not, not done only once in his paintings. We have at least nine paintings, nine uh, important masterpieces from Gentile in which he puts some uh, writing. I could not say that it's an inscription because there is a lot of uh, things which have been uh, said and written on the halos of the Virgin Mary and of uh, Saint Joseph, which have, by the way, Arabic script. It makes sense or it makes not sense is not a matter we are discussing now. What is interesting for us is that even in the textiles down on, on, the, on the back of the uh, two, uh, the Virgin Mary and on the, on the center of this object, of this uh, painting, there is a, a young man who has, without doubts, inscription with letters from Islamic uh, alphabet. So that is the idea, not to say that it was Arabic or that it had taken the Shahada or what else, but to show that they were very interesting in this kind of thing. And the same is on, on, on the back. Here we have uh, San Giovannino, uh, very, very nice sculpture. And the, again, the halo of this uh, sculpture is made with inscriptions and is made in metalwork. And the fact that they use metalwork to show this is because we, I think, and most of the scholars think, that the inspiration for this writing was coming from metalworks and textiles. So you have this kind of idea. And to show, to show the interest of this special thing, because the Medici family was very important, had a very important connection with the Magi, Magi story. So Benozzo Gozzoli in Palazzo Medici Riccardi has made a very important uh, fresco of uh, the, the uh, Magi uh, people. And again, you have this very important, bright, beautiful oriental and textiles also, but also the Florentine textiles, which as we said, are, were traded from one side to the other of the Mediterranean Sea. Metal war has been very important for, for the Medici. The Medici, Lorenzo the Magnificent, had a very nice, important collection of metal work. And um, we know by documents and by prices which were listed of what he uh, had in his collection that the masterpieces were there. And I don't know, I could not know, I mean, but this is also a very important piece. This is a piece uh, which is called the Vase Barberini by the Barberini family, which was the, the family of a pope and is a piece which is, uh, uh, has been made around uh, mid of the 13th century and uh, is special, the shape of this thing is engraved and then you had inlay of silver and gold which make it really, really precious, precious not for the quantity of material you have, there is not so much gold or so much silver, but the workmanship is superb. And this is a piece which comes from our friends from the Louvre Museum, which uh, very kindly loaned us this object, which is 
as I said, very special for the provenance and very special also because it has a name uh, engraved on it, which is Salah ad-Din. Salah ad-Din was the famous, uh, what in Italy was called Saladino, and Salah ad-Din was the, the, the enemy of the Crusaders, but a, even he was a, a, a knight, he was, a, it was also uh, in the legends about the Crusaders, uh, thought to be a gentleman. Uh, so it, it was an example of a fighter, but example of a fighter who was, who was really, really very, very important. So the Ayyubid uh, period of, of uh, Islamic art. So we are very proud to have uh, these objects. And as, as I said, we don't know, maybe it, it's, it's coming back at home, maybe it was collected by Lorenzo and went away in different ways, but this is the beauty of having an exhibition like this and having objects all around the world and especially masterpieces as this is. Now here we have a, a very large dish which is so-called Hispano-Moresque pottery which is a luster uh, technique, which is the, a technique which developed first in, in the Middle East in, uh, and then it, it has been uh, transmitted to the, to the western part of the world, but still Islamic part like Spain. So it comes from Manises, which is close to Valencia. And it has been done at the beginning of the 16th century and has been ordered by a, a pope. The pope is, is Leone X, uh, from the Medici family, so you have the shield of the Medici family in the middle and also uh, the, the, the shape of, the, of the, the fact that he was a pope. And this is part of, uh, of uh, um, an idea that developed a lot in, in, the, in the end of 15th and beginning of 16th century, having their pieces with their shield of arms and coming from, from Spain. At least 50 Ita uh, Florentine families, only in Florence, 50 families had this uh, pottery with shield. And this, of course, this large dish was not used to be, to be put in, in, on a table, but was to have been put on, 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 a, on, a, on a wall. The point is that when they ordered to make this dish uh, to, the, to the workman, they have made two holes just in, uh, just to hold it, that you can put nails and put on, on, the, on the cover. But if you can see, the two holes are on the side of the dish, and if you put uh, the, the dish it, as it's correctly, it, you could not see not, not right, the right position of the, of the coat of arms. So the man, the poor pope, not poor, but the pope, paid a lot of money to have something which was badly done because probably also because for the for the uh, workers for the people who has made the decoration the shield has not so much uh, meaning uh, and so they have put it but in the wrong position in a way this is uh, um, a very uh, unusual carpet uh, usually carpets are, are done in the Middle East to stand on the floor, you know, you they can stand on the floor of a palace, of a mosque or a tent or whatever. But this has a very different uh, shape as it, it, it has been done for, for the European market. Uh, this carpet is an Ottoman carpet of the 16th century, is kept now in uh, San Gimignano, which is not very far from Florence and of course the legend you know has to 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 do that prop it could have been the, the a carpet of, of Machiavelli but no no proof about this anyway it, if it could have been done for for his uh, uh, for his table because is as as is as, as a cross shape so you have these sides which are made to cover the lateral part of, of, of a table and of course has no meaning for, for, the, for the eastern part to have, uh, to have a table and it's like you have two uh, overlapping, overlapping uh, carpets and in the middle you have a, a different design. So it's, it's made in, in four 
sections with these, these sides and the central part which has a round medallion, floral medallion uh, in, in, in the center. It's, it's really, really particular. These objects is a special one. Is, is, we have not so many objects from Iran or Persia in the exhibition. And it's not a, a matter, it's a choice, because the relation with Iran or Persia started very late. Started at the beginning of the 17th century, when all, you know, in the West and in the East, they were trying to fight against the Ottomans, and the, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That was the idea behind this kind of thing, which still now is working. And, but this object is a special one, which is, comes from the Quirinale, the, the, the Republic of Italy presidents, and is a, 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 not a carpet, but is a kilim, a flat weave, a, a silk object coming from the best of the looms in Isfahan, which was the capital of the kingdom at the time, and under probably the period of Shah Abbas, Shah Abbas the, the Great, who uh, passed away in 1628, something around, at the beginning of the 17th century. Anyway, these silk objects were made uh, preciously, and what is very interesting is that in the, in the center of this uh, uh, object, in this kilim, you have the shield of arm of a Polish Sigismund Vasa III king, because the Polish were very active in asking and in, in trading and in asking special commission for, uh, for them. And so these very nice and bright, very, very good condition silk color uh, kilim is, is uh, is one of the few, I think 10 or not, not many of them, which you can still find in European collections. With this, this again, mixing up thing, that you have a, a Islamic Persian production with a shield, a coat of arm of a European, in, the, in this kind, uh, Polish uh, important family on the center of it. The second part of the exhibition is devoted to the 19th century. Florence has been very important in the second half of the 19th century, also for, because it became capital of the new established uh, kingdom of Italy, and also there was a very important tradition of uh, Orientalist studies. Uh, one of the most important and impressive scholars of the 19th century was Michele Amari, which even being Sicilian, he was living in Florence and uh, he was uh, a leading scholar and minister of education at the time and he organized the fourth international congress of uh, uh, orientalism, orientalistic studies in, in Florence. So this was the environment. In this environment there are four uh, mainly characters which uh, we, we have shown in this exhibition. The first one was Bardini, Stefano Bardini, a dealer, uh, special on carpets, who, who bought the most impressive carpets in Florence, in churches, everywhere in Italy, and sold them on the market all over the world. Second one was uh, Frederick Stibbert. Frederick Stibbert was, uh, again, uh, a very important and leader in collecting arms and armors in his, uh, in his travels all around Europe, especially in France, Paris and other places, at auctions, and, uh, and he became very, he was already very rich and he established a, 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 his collection in a special built uh, villa in, in Montughi, which is in Florence now, that at the time was a little out of Florence, and it was a very nice place with arms, armors, and other things. The third one was, uh, was Franchetti, which was a collector of, of um, textiles, mainly textiles, which he left to Florence, and, uh, and uh, his collection was not only about Islamic collection, as Islamic textiles, he had also Italian textiles and textiles of all sorts. 
But probably one of the most impressive and interesting story is the story of the collection of the dealer and collector Louis Caron. He was not very uh, friend of the government of, French, uh, uh, of France at the, at the period, let's say. He was against the Republic of France and he moved himself from Lyon to uh, Tuscany and at the very end he came to Florence and of course he was, as I said, the dealer and collector and the, co the, the collection started, was started from his father and at, at the very end, in 1888, he made one impressive, unbelievable gift to the town because he gave 3,300, I repeat, 3,300 masterpieces because it was not, uh, I would say, you can say little objects, masterpieces of art especially the ivory collection is an extraordinary collection but also he left Islamic uh, objects which are again masterpieces, metal work, a lot of objects and in a way he transformed the museum because the museum, the Bargello was thought begin before to be the sculpture museum but with 3,300 pieces coming and then Frank Etienne and other Ressman and many other people who left after, after this, this unbelievable uh, gift from, from Louis Carin. Uh, as I said, uh, the museum was transformed. Before it was a museum devoted to sculpture, to the very important sculpture, especially in Florence. So Michelangelo and Donatello and Verrocchio and all the most important sculptures here. And after the gift from Louis Carin, it became more uh, and also a museum of decorative arts because he left not big sculpture, but he left paintings, uh, ivory, pottery, metalwork, a lot of things. So we have to say that uh, Caran made, made a gift for this town in Florence and also for uh, Islamic art. We could not think having a, a, a museum or a section of a museum like the Bargello had until, until this exhibition, which since 35, 36 years, it was established an Islamic room without the gift of Caran, because the most important part of the collection is Karan and it completes the pieces which were left by the Medici which we have seen in the first part of the collection in the Uffizi. So yes, I am already working on, on some projects. One project is in Torino which is uh, Islam and Water and another one is on the other side of Italy, in Palermo, and would be about uh, maybe Islamic metalwork, but still are at the beginning of, uh, of the elaboration of these ideas.